Hey guys, it's Darren here again from Global Garage. Today I'm just going to show you a quick repair on this Xbox 360 Slim. It just has a, a typical sort of stuck uh, DVD drive. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes when you inject it, it gets a bit stuck and it sort of pulls to the, to the right a little bit and it's just not aligned properly. So we're going to pull this apart and just have a, have a quick look at it. So I'll just try and show you the problem. Just turn it on, push eject. Uh, look, that came out pretty good that time, but let's just try it a few more times. Yeah, look, it's it's hard to demonstrate, but uh, it, it, it tends to want to pull to the right as it pulls out. Sometimes it runs nicely, sometimes it doesn't. So uh, I'll just go ahead and open that up now. So if you look at your Xbox, uh, look at the front and just look at the top left-hand edge first. We just basically grab, um, just grab a screwdriver and just lift up this plastic at one end. Um, it's quite easy to do. Once you get, st get that started, the whole edge will come out. This is really flexible plastic, so it doesn't break too e easily, which is good. Then uh, to get this sort of insert out, you know, there's, there's different techniques. You can actually pop this tray and it breaks some tabs and it comes out, but I find that there's just uh, six retaining clips, you know, one here on the end, one in the middle, and one up this end, and you know, three on each side. So if you just put a fine screwdriver sort of down the hole there, and wedge your finger under the under the lip and kind of lift up with some pressure. You can actually just pop the the retaining clip out. So there we go. There's one out, and just keeping a bit of pressure on it. Do another one on that side, and do another one on that side, and then the, the whole thing will just come right out. So sometimes you have to do both sides, and sometimes you don't. The whole thing tends to just lift right out. So you don't have to break it. Um, I don't know why people don't do that, but it's pretty easy. So then on the other side, uh, this is where we've got the actual lifting uh, little door there for the for the drive bay. I don't have a drive in this one, but I'm gonna probably hunt a, a caddy down and then I'll be able to install the drive. But um, yeah, if you've got a drive there, just pull it out and then you can go ahead and pull these rest of these trays out. And I think this side is exactly the same as the last, just uh, some retaining clips. So let's uh, start with the corner, put your small screwdriver down, get your finger under that under that edge under there, and just, yeah, just unhook it. Uh, I just slipped, there you go, unhook that. Um, I don't know if it's this hole or this hole. Yeah, it's that one there. Uh, this, this has actually been out this side and it is a bit broken, but you don't need to break it. Um, there we go, we're a bit caught on this edge. So I'll try and pop that out, there it goes. So the whole thing comes out in one piece uh, and this plastic tray should still be attached to the frame. These are the actual parts that break when you force it. So this side actually has been forced off by someone else and broken, but you don't need to. There's really no need to do that. Uh, it's just these big sort of retaining clips that matter. That's what you're aiming for. So when you put your when you put your screwdriver sort of down the hole, you're effectively going under and pulling that in like that. That's sort of the sort of angle you're going for. Um, so that's all I do there. It doesn't really, I don't know, you don't really need to break it. So, okay, that's the edges off. And okay, for the, so for the next part, we just need to remove, or we'll just move the tab down in here. So. If you look closely, it's, it's probably a little bit hard to see. There's there's this metal part up here. You don't worry about that, but it's just below it. There's a big plastic tab, and you just literally um, just open that up a little bit, and that will start to separate. So that's what we're aiming for on this side. But before we can do that, if you look on the back of that area, you know, we've got a bit of a separation. Uh, someone else has wedged this open here. Now you can do that. You can just force a screwdriver down there. But what you're meant to do, if you 
press on this label um, firmly at the bottom there, just near the, near the black and white stripe, you'll actually notice there's a very small uh, circular indent. I'll just zoom in there for you. Right where I'm pointing, right, right there. And that's actually a hole in the label that you're meant to poke through. And that's actually a release mechanism. So I'll just turn that around and zoom back out a little bit. So you're meant to actually push on that to release the next tab. So if we, if we come back down the end here and take out our major tab, separate it, just keep some pressure on that. Uh, poke down through that hole, that's how you release that tab. So you're just basically pushing this, uh, look, you know what, someone's really destroyed that in the past, but they didn't need to, need to. It's a real shame that people force these things open when there's a proper ways to open it. So if we go back to the other side, it's really easy as well. There's two big plastic clips down in here. I might use a larger blade actually. Separate that one. Um, do both. There you go. And then once you've got both, the whole case will start to come apart. I'll just put that down and turn it back around. So we're facing the back and the whole thing just lifts up and straight off. So that was the rear clips on the back of that case. They're all intact quite well, but yeah, it's a shame people break these things. I don't know, I just find it unnecessary. And looking at the back of this one, yeah, that's the tab that was broken. So the guy that did this, obviously just sort of wedged a screwdriver in between that slit and just forced it and just popped it. But if you go in through that little hole in the label, you can actually release it properly. So that's what I'd recommend you guys do. Right, so, you know, that covers off. Now, um, we're gonna get to the CD tray, but we may as well pull this front off. So just rock that with your thumbs forward and uh, that should all just come right off. And just, just be wary of the ribbon that's attached there. So we probably should disconnect that up here. Just, uh, just balance that there for a second. And just slide that out. Okay, so then that'll all come away and we don't damage anything. Uh, and then we're left with this top side. Okay, so this top side, um, you know, it kind of appears that it lifts off, but it doesn't. We actually have to spin it back over to the underneath and these black Torx, uh, I think the Torx 10 screws, we've got to just take all them out. They actually go right through and attach the lid. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and four, five. You know, this one's this one's not even fully down. So yeah, the guy that touched this last didn't do a very good job. Uh, these ones in the middle, they, these small ones, they, they attach the X clamp to the CPU. So don't take them out, there's no need. So I'll just get these screws out and we'll flip it back. So I've got myself a little Torx driver here, just a removable um, piece. You know, I've got a whole set of these things. So pick yourself up a little toolkit like that and you've pretty much got every piece you'll ever need. So I'll just quickly back these out. Um, I'll do it off camera. It's not very interesting to watch me pull screws out and I'll be back in a sec. All right, so they're all out. They're these big suckers. So just put them aside. Uh, they're all the same. Put them aside and uh, then we can flip our unit back over. Okay, so just before you pop this lid off, just turn it back up on its edge. And in this corner up here, um, yeah, it's all starting to come apart, but if this corner up in here, you've got this uh, this card up in, in this edge. Uh, you're gonna probably need to remove that to get this, this tray off properly. So you can probably wiggle it out, but look, I think it's just a lot easier just to really, to back that one screw out. You know, back that one screw out there, pull out the screw, put it aside, 
and take that card out because then you'll be free and so just lift the whole tray off so you know you don't have to do that but you're gonna get caught in this sort of area if you don't do that so and there we go we're left with the uh, you know both cases are off we can see our fan we can get in there and clean all the dust out while we're doing this you know i won't go through all that today but really recommend you you've come this far um yeah just give that a clean this one's actually not too bad looks like the guy has actually cleaned it out which is good but what we're interested in today is this cd drive so let's get into that so for us to get this out the whole thing just lifts up actually but if you look at the side well the back here i should say uh, we've got some cables attached you know we've got power um and the data interface it's going to be like a sata connection so kind of just got to get your fingers in there and pull them out it's not too difficult just wiggle them out and the drive's free so i'll now put this whole base unit aside and we can focus on our drive so 360 slim all right spin him over okay so what you're gonna need to do is you know just have a look at this thing top and bottom uh, the top's pretty flush there's not much we can do there or to work with there the bottom we've got four screws and we've got these rubber sort of uh, protection molds on the corners so first thing you want to do is just peel that off it's sort of in the way um, just remember which way it goes and then we're just left with four phillips head screws so just back them out and we're all done so let's have a look at our unit i think what we should do is just very carefully pull it apart fold the tray apart okay and i've just disconnected the my tray off the front there just a bit of a, a sticky sort of adhesive you just gently prise that away and you're left with the drive so flip the whole thing back over to the top side um, I like to do it this way actually and then just sort of want to just lift the case and slide it it's a little bit hard to do there we go so you kind of just loosen it off lift it up there you go so there's actually a little locking clip just there lift it up and then the whole thing will just gently slide right out there we go case case dismissed and then we're sort of getting right into it now and what we're aiming for is there's little tracks underneath these uh, underneath this tray and i think one of them is just out of alignment so we're going to dig a bit deeper okay so to get this tray out uh mine's already sliding but yours if yours is in the back locked position uh, mine was two seconds ago all you need to do is just come back to your base unit just plug in the connector here into the drive put your front panel connector back on and just touch eject and that'll release the drive. I wouldn't go forcing the drive open, just let the electronics eject it naturally. Then it'll slide freely like this. And uh, so if yours is out of alignment and I think it's just out of alignment in this sort of position, just pull it all the way out, gets to the end, just grab some small pliers on this little lock here. Uh, you kind of want to grab it and pull back a little bit, just kind of lift it up and then It'll release the, the whole tray and the whole tray will just come out. And then look, it's just a matter of then starting off square and just re-sliding it in. So just get it, get it seated, run it in nice and square. Just get it over that little clip and you'll hear it click and then the whole thing will slide back in nicely. So there you go. So I, I've actually gone too far, I've actually locked it there. And that's all you need to really do. So just a bit of common sense, pull the whole thing out, just spin the gears a little bit, make sure everything looks and is spinning nicely, grease it up if necessary with lithium uh, mechanical grease. You can get some of that and just put it on the trays and put on the gears, on the rods, I should say, sorry. And just make sure it all runs nicely and then just refit it like that and make sure it sits square when, you know, when it's back in like this and you should be good to go. Uh, just one thing, you know, obviously, if you're having laser problems, now's the time to obviously pull the laser out and replace it. It's just a matter of disconnecting that ribbon, uh, getting back in there, pulling it off these rods and putting a new one in. Uh, I'm just gonna give my laser lens a little clean, um, just with some isopropyl, and then I'll put the whole thing back together. 
So I always take the opportunity to clean the lens just very gently with uh, with a cotton bud and some isopropyl alcohol. I've just got it sprayed into the lid here. Just, just clean that off. Even a few grains of dust can really affect the laser. So you, know, you might have touched it as you were playing with this. So just take the opportunity and put it and clean it up. Then before any dust settles back on it, grab your case, the top side, and slide that all the way along to there. The, uh, the felt and the sticky stuff should sort of reattach on the front. And then we can flip it back over and do the bottom. And the bottom case just folds in like this. And I'm remembering that the felt on this edge uh, makes contact with the outside here. It's still sticky, so when you put that back together, just sort of put the end in first like that. You'll see how it kind of slips under that felt. You could theoretically glue that down, but I don't think it's necessary. And that's it, guys. You know, then everything's just in the reverse order. So we uh, then we put our Phillips head screws back in. Okay, so the screws are all in. Uh, spinning them around, and let's refit our rubber thing. Now, if you look at this, you know it was pretty easy to work out which way it went. There's three bars on one side and two bars on the other. The three just goes to the screw side, so just uh, probably turn it up on its end. Fit that back in place. Stops the vibration, I think, this thing. So when, when you know when the disc spins and maybe the CD is slightly out of balance, this vibrates and that'll the rubber will stop it vibrating inside the case. So just refit that. Then we can put the whole unit back in our back in our case. So probably put it in that position. Grab our drive. Reach in and do the cables. Let's do the that one first. And that one. That's it. Drop it in. Job's done. That's all there is really to that. Now we have to start refitting our case. Um, probably spin the whole thing back around. Grab our top case with the vents. And that one just sits on top like that. Just go around and just get it to sit flush. Make sure it just sits over the edges like that. And that's, that's all we do there. Um, come back in. Now, like, you know, we may as well fit this card in the same order in which we took it apart. Just refit it, it goes over the metal shield. Put your screw back in, tighten that up, and you're all done. And then flip it on its back. Right, so then we're just gonna refit our screws. Uh, just put it back in that original position. Grab your big screws and just put them back in with your Torx driver. Okay, so then it's our front panel. So spin them around, just sit it like that. Get your front panel. Got to put this ribbon back in place. So I tend to sit it sort of like that. Put the actual blade part, the actual connector in the socket first and then stretch the, the blue loop over it. I think you can see that. I'll just, just come back up on the edge here so you can see. And then I just like to make sure that's clipped and locked into place. Then we can sort of just reach over and put our fascia panel back in. All you're gonna need to do is just make sure the, the tabs here go in the right spots. And once all that's sort of lined up, it should just pull down and click in. So that's that. Onto this side and, you know, pretty much from here, it's self-explanatory. Just put your, put your case back together. Just this front edge, the only tip is, you know, just slide it under first. Come to the back, just press straight down, and all those tabs go into place. And you know, then we're on the home stretch. So the side panels uh, start off with this side with the the card here. Pick up this panel with a with the big solid section in the hole there, and that's the one that fits over. And then our grill. Um, the grill only goes one way. So if you look at this end, it's got one tab up there. We're just gonna match it to that one tab. So start at one end, just work your way along, and that'll just click in.
flippity flip over the other side and you know, you guessed it, we just do the same thing. So I match the panel, put it all in, put in your final grill. Uh, and this one just connects, slips under and then sits back down. So, but that's it, we're all back together. Everything looks pretty square and let's uh, plug it in and see what happens. Let's just pop it open again. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. Look, you know, at the start of this video, I didn't really demonstrate it jamming, but I'm sure yours is. Um, just follow this whole process on how to pull that apart and realign your tray. I think that's all you need to do. Um, I have fixed others and that's all I've had to do. This one, I just wanted to pull it apart anyway and just have a look and uh, sort of have a, make sure that was sitting correctly. Have a look at the laser, give it a clean and uh, just check out the internals anyway. So that was the sort of purpose of my video. but. You know, you're probably watching this to see how to fix your CD tray. So hope that's somewhat helpful for you and you get your Xbox 360 Slim running again. So as always, guys, I'll aim to post up another video again here soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.